you are familiar with uh, death by PowerPoint, can you raise your hands? And death by Excel? Right, and Tableau? Right, so I'm going to talk about data visualization and how you can use it to think more and to convince more people. But first, I want to play a game. Can you guess the missing word? Anybody? It's data. If you want to convince people, you need data, yes? The problem is that data usually looks like this, and it will leave people feeling like this. And if you want to convince them, you, ne you need to make them excited, right? Hence, data visualization. The second problem is that there is a lot of bad, bad data visualization. I'm going to show you some examples from the internet. Uh, this is a chart representing the 100 most active accounts. Wrong chart for the job. This is another chart, number of data scientists per country. Information overload. And my favorite, the useless chart. So, I am a professor, and as an academic, I went on a quest to find out why we have so much bad visualization. And I found out the culprit. School dropout, never took a design course, yet his software is used to produce 90% of the charts that you will see in your life that he is not the only at fault here, as the education system, we also have blame on this. Because to do data visualization, you need data skills, but you also need design skills. But the data guys, they look like this. And the designers look like this, and they don't go to the same schools. And the schools where they teach data, they don't have design, and vice versa. And there's very, very few schools where they teach both well. So to fix this, I'm going to give you six rules to be awesome at data visualization. Number one, tell me a story. When you make a chart, tell me a story. Because if you say something, some people will remember. If you make a chart, more people will remember it. If you make a story out of it, it's even better. Number two, know the difference between data and information. What is the difference? Second exercise, can you order these four keywords? Give you five seconds. First information, then data, then knowledge and wisdom. Okay. When I give this to my students, most of them come up with this arrangement. So what, what makes them arrange words like this? What's the difference? What's the attributes of data versus wisdom? So data is abundant. There is a lot of data. Wisdom is it's a scarce and it's valuable, right? And this arrow is called the arrow of value. Number three. Know how to create knowledge. What is knowledge? This pyramid is called the data information knowledge wisdom model. And how do you transform data into information? Well, one way is to summarize, to reduce overload. How do you transform information into knowledge? Right. So. One way is to get your new information that you found and put it in context to relate it to other bodies of existing knowledge. That's how Einstein got his Nobel Prize. And what is wisdom? Yes. Right. So one guy told me, Jose, if you want to be a leader, it's not only what you say, it's when you say it. That's wisdom.
And there's two thinking modes here. You need an exploratory thinking mode, what in design thinking we call divergent thinking. And then you need a different thinking mode, conversion thinking. Number four, if you make a chart and nobody likes it on Twitter, did it really happen? No. Let's say you have this chart. How do you make it more memorable? Use pop culture, for example, personas. Number five, understand how to use narratives in a chart or in a presentation. What is the relationship, what is the role between these three elements? Well, the role of data is to lend credibility to your story. What's the role of the story? To advance the narrative. And what is the narrative in this tale? That we want to teach our kids not to trust strangers. But you cannot go to a five-year-old and tell him that. You need to wrap it in a story. It works also for adults. Can you identify the narrative, the story, and the data here? 350 million is the data. This is the story that we send money out, and the narrative is, let's take back control. Fake numbers, but very effective. Number six, choose a chart that is compatible with what you want to say. For example, this is data, gender breakdown of data scientists worldwide. If I ask people to visualize this, most people come up with this chart. Histogram? Some of the people come up with this chart, a pie chart. Others come up with this one, a bar chart. What is the problem with the pie chart here? What is a pie? It's a metaphor for a cake. What happens when you have 50 kids around a cake? There's going to be a fight. It's the scarcity narrative. So you have to be careful if your chart is compatible with what you want to say. A more neutral chart is the stack bar. But it's kind of boring. How would you make it more interesting? memorable. Well, we can use personas. In the case, we chose uh, superheroes. And remember, if they don't remember it, it didn't happen. So whenever you can, dramatize. So I'm going to show you two examples of very, very improbable presentations. A few years ago, Elon Musk was talking about solar panels. He wanted to promote solar panels. He said, we just need to cover one pixel of the USA to fulfill our energy needs. Well, this presentation was a flop. Why? Well, can you trust something that you don't see? And second, what is the narrative here? Which piece of land are we going to use for this? Is it going to be your land or your land? Same purpose, different strategy. A few years earlier, a German company called QCells used a similar chart like this one. It's a different narrative. Look at how much solar energy hits the Earth in one year. It's so many. Let's use some of, some of it. So very same purpose, different charts, different outcome. Another one. This is CO2 emission, concentration, and this is temperature. And this is Al Gore. And this is a lift. They put Al Gore on a lift to show that the concentrations are off the charts. This presentation got 62,000 views on YouTube. A few years later, professor from the UK, Ed Hawkins, takes less data, and creates this chart, spiral chart. He posts it on Twitter. It went viral in minutes. Temperatures spiraling out of control. But then comes my favorite person, 
ignores all these charts and tells us a story. And what's the story here? Hey, I have to go to this climate conference, but I'm not going to jet because I have integrity and I want to reduce my carbon footprint. And what's the data here? Look at these big waves behind me. They look so menacing. This is dangerous. This is an emergency. So same data, three different ways to tell the story, three different outcomes. So summarizing, if you want to be awesome at data visualization, first, tell me a story. Second, data is not information. Third, know how to create knowledge. Four, make it memorable. Five, use narratives. And six, choose a chart that is compatible. Thank you very much.